Hey guys, so it's been a while since I've recorded a video for y'all. I'm really sorry. Um, life's been kind of crazy. We moved again. Um, we moved into a really like shady area after I got out of the army and we had to like break our lease and move. So we've been doing that. Uh, while I've been doing that, I've been working on going back into the army. I noticed a lot of you guys are messaging me asking me if I made it to OCS. Um, I didn't make it to OCS. I think I mentioned that previously, but no, I did not make it to OCS. Um, I broke my hip in basic training, so I was medically discharged for that. Um, and I can go more into detail about that process if you're curious. Um, it's kind of a long process. Basically, I mean, you're breaking your contract with the government, so it was, it was fast for like me breaking my contract but it was kind of it felt like it took forever because you're sitting in basic training um waiting on stuff to get pushed through so basically what i want to talk about in this video is how to impress your drills um i really wanted to get more in depth with basic training because i feel like a lot of you guys out there are looking for basic training videos and not medical waiver videos or like how to get like get a med waiver to go back in which is what I'm in the middle of doing right now so I'm just going to do something that's pretty useful for everyone and then maybe later I'll do a video on um med waiver process and what I'm dealing with right now trying to get back into the army so um I have a list here for you guys number one on how to impress your drill sergeants is sound off so um you're going to be asked to, if you're standing in line for chow, you're probably going to be asked to sound off and recite the army creed or the soldier's creed um, or the army song. Um, I kind of always wished for the soldier's creed because I didn't have to sing and you're like really tired and you don't care how you sound when you sing so it just sounds awful and everyone sounds awful but the soldier's creed is... Um, for me, it was kind of difficult because I was under a lot of pressure the first time and I wasn't really expecting to be called out like that. But the second time around, I actually got it right and I sounded off and I felt amazing because that's what you're supposed to do and my drill sergeant was actually impressed. So try and sound off with anything like that. Um, if you're, you know, be like the loudest in your platoon if you can. Um, don't be soft spoken. Hello, my name is Elena Grama. I was born with Kills Like Fish. Uh, that was a big thing for a lot of females to learn is to not be so soft spoken. Um, unless it's like a very like necessary situation where you're talking about something like uh, taking some medication that you need or um, something along those lines. Don't. Also, with being soft-spoken, don't be afraid to go to a male drill sergeant if you have to go to the latrine to, like, change your tampon or something, f like, related, like, fem feminine like that. Um, just be, like, professional. Um, of course, you can be, like, more discreet when you're talking about stuff like that, but as far as, like, sounding off cadence, um... The soldiers creed the army song things like that you really want to if you if you're confident and you know if you know it then you definitely want to sound off and that will impress your drill sergeants number two is um know your values and your general orders so we just talked about the song and the creed you'll want to learn those um i would suggest learning all this stuff before you go but um if you want to do it the hard way like i did um, I actually memorized the creed before I went, but everything else I learned while I got there. So, um, if you know your values, if you're like one of the first to know your values and your general orders, um, that will be pretty impressive because they're, what they did with us was they tried to like catch us off guard and, um, ask us to recite those things really early on, like right after reception. And the people who knew how to do it they really impressed the drill sergeants and people who didn't actually made their whole platoon get like 
homework. So you had to like write the Soldier's Creed 10 times or 20 times or whatever your drill sergeants picked out. So have your general orders and your values down. Um, do really well on your PT test, especially females, um, because we're kind of held to like a, I don't want to say a lower standard, but it's a little more lax. You don't have to do as many sit-ups and push-ups, and your run time is a little bit slower too. So if you're kind of getting up there in like the male standards, as a female, that's very impressive. Um, I mean, don't, don't like brag about it. You never want to brag about your PT scores. Um, if you if you are like a PT stud, don't brag about your scores. Just try and like help others out, um, because everyone will be like on a different uh, level. You should before you go tr like practice PT. Look up you know the standard like stretching and like warm up routines on YouTube. That's what I did, and then practice running your two mile and your setups and your push ups for two minutes and preferably practice your two mile without music. That's something that I really struggle with and I still struggle with is running without music. So if you're really used to running with music or a TV, like if you if you run on a treadmill at a gym, you'll wanna go outside on a track, the flattest track you can find and run without music. It's really boring, but um, trust me, the, the 5 a.m. Uh, PT runs will go a lot easier if you just get it out of the way and get used to it. Um, let's see. Number four is, okay, so certain times you can volunteer or take charge to do things. Um, so sometimes you have like field chow where you're out at first aid and you're not at your company. You're out at first aid. The, you're, someone in your um, company, a drill sergeant, will bring chow out to you out to your location for the company to eat and um i guess like what the what 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 we did is that we like switched off platoon so like um first platoon would be like it would be like their volunteer week and so anyone from first platoon could come up and you know volunteer to serve chow so like people that serve chow like in the cafeteria like the defect those people work there but when you do field chow it's always privates that feel, that serve chow so when they call for like 10 privates to volunteer for something just go out and do it it's not going to be anything crazy i thought i was supposed to like lay low if they called for volunteers but most of the time it's just helping the drill sergeants um set something up for um like drill some sort of drill that you're going to do later that day um, filling up uh, water canteens or sometimes counting ammo. I had to do a lot of that because I was on profile and that was a sitting detail that I could do. So I counted a lot of ammo. Um, some like general paperwork, I like had to do that, like put some, some paperwork together. Um, so just, just volunteer. Um, even if you're really tired, that will start to stick out to the drill sergeants and they'll start to notice if you continuously volunteer they'll they'll point that out and they might not say like hey private so-and-so good job but they'll say hey platoon um private so-and-so and so-and-so -so are always volunteering like y'all are slacking pick it up so um that's really good if they notice that you're a volunteer and you're kind of like selfless and you're serving that's part of the values so you're exhibiting that already um Number five is be a battle buddy. So everywhere you go, you have to have battle buddies with you, at least one of the same sex. So if you're a male, you have to have at least one male battle buddy with you. If you're a female, at least one female battle buddy with you. And if there's three of you, it has to be like two males and a female or two females and a male. Um, and then anything bigger than that, I don't think it really matters. Um, but you just can't be alone. Like even going to the latrine, you can't be by yourself. So if someone needs to run downstairs after final formation to turn in like a sick call slip or, um, get their medication, or if they were just called downstairs because a drill sergeant has to talk to them about something, just volunteer to go with them. If they're like, Hey, I need a battle buddy. Uh, just, 
just go, you know? I mean, odds are it'll take maybe a minute. Now, the, the first few weeks, it's hard to be such a good battle buddy because um, people, like, like, you don't know what you're doing, and so a lot of people get in trouble uh, for whatever reason. Um, or they'll just, like, want to mess with you if you're, like, uh, running down the hallway or whatever, running to where you need to be. If they see, like, something wrong with your uniform, they'll stop you and, and they might, like, smoke you. So, um, it was really hard to be a battle buddy in the beginning. But then more towards the end, like, people knew what they were doing and, um, usually you weren't caught, um, making any mistakes because you knew, you know better than that after a couple weeks. So, being a battle buddy is hard, but people will appreciate it later. And you, more than likely, you'll remember your, like, good battle buddies. Like, I remember a couple of the females that were always good battle buddies for me, um, even when I was on crutches. And we still stay in touch. And it's been over a year since I went into basic training first, like, initially. So, we still keep in touch. Um, some of those relationships, they won't go away. They'll last. So, um, just be wary of that. Um, keep your uniforms and lockers squared away. So, this was a really big deal, especially when you're starting out. So, you get to reception and you have your locker. It's probably not going to be like the locker that you have it at your company once you do get to like your actual company. But try and keep it as organized as possible. We didn't have any locker inspections in reception. There was way too much going on in reception. They had a lot of stuff to get done, so um, that's not really a big deal. Plus, you don't have all of your stuff yet either. So just everything that you do have, just try and keep it organized. Keep all your hygiene stuff like clean and in a space where it can air out without like like falling on the floor. You don't want to like drop your toothbrush on the floor accidentally, but you don't want to keep it in like a airtight bag where it can have mold and stuff grow on it from the moisture. Um, but once you get to your company, you'll have all of your issued items and your uniforms. So like any like little like strings hanging off your uniforms or anything like that, you can clip those off with your nail clippers. Um, and then you want to make sure your name tapes are straight, things like that. Like make sure if you have a rank on your PC, like a lot of special like specialists for sure get ranks put on their PCs. Um, make sure that is straight. And it took me a couple of times to get it completely straight, but just things like that. Um, I would say the first night that you get to your company or the first day, uh, you're going to be really busy. I think I like kind of like blacked out. Like I remember shark attack and then I remember us running from like dumping all of our stuff out on the ground. We went through like a checklist and then, um, I remember us running up to like all the females got together and followed a female drill sergeant up to the female bay and we were assigned our bunks and that is like all I remember from day one or day zero so um and it was a long day I think we got to our company at like maybe like noon ish so like the rest of the day I don't remember going to chow I don't remember anything that happened that night except for getting smoked really bad outside because we didn't know how to count to go inside for final formation but um if you can find any spare time like day zero or like that night go ahead and get your stuff organized in your locker in your bunks um we had a like bunk that was hollowed out in the middle um, that our mattress sat on top of that we had like all of our um, like just a bunch of stuff issued stuff and then we had a wall locker too that we had to keep like our ruck in and like our uniforms hanging up so organize all that stuff as soon as you can because then they're going to do locker inspections pretty quickly I want to say like within the first week they're going to do the first locker inspections or at least they did for us and mainly everyone was like tore up about it so like they got messed up so including myself um I think I had my rock in the wrong 
locker. So for me, it made sense for my rec to be in my wall locker because it's down, it goes all the way down to the floor. And so you're not like breaking your back trying to get your ruck out of your locker. Um, but it was supposed to be in my bunk. So, which I was top bunk. So I had to like climb up and drag this ruck out of the top bunk. And it was, it was, I mean, it was pretty heavy. It was like, I don't know, probably 45 pounds or so. It's not too bad, but I mean, when you're exhausted from doing push ups all day, it kind of sucks. So, and you don't want to break your frame. Your frame is plastic on your ruck, and so if you, like, yank it out of there too hard and it catches on the locker, it'll, like, crack. And that's what supports, like, the whole thing. So, that could really screw up your back if you mess up your ruck really bad. And you have to pay for that later, so don't. Just be careful with your ruck, even though it's pretty sturdy. You don't want to break the frame. Um... So yeah, keep your lockers squared away. Make sure you're like clear on where things are supposed to go. And they'll have like pictures posted up around the walls or like they, they should, we did. Um, so just try and get that squared away as fast as possible because they're, they're gonna do locker inspections and then um, that's just another way to impress them. Like if you already know that your locker is like squared away and they see that it is, A, you're not gonna get a counseling and B, they're going to point you out and say, hey, everyone go look at so-and-so's locker because they know what the fuck they're doing. So that's another good way. Um, number six is pay attention in class. I, okay, this is very obvious, but when you're running on hardly any sleep from fire guard, um, getting woken up in the middle of the night because someone's out of uniform, um, I mean, there was a lot of running involved at like 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. So, it's hard to go ruck all the way to like first aid, which is, I don't know, maybe a mile down the road. But when you get there, first of all, it was in the middle of winter for us. So, when we stepped in, they had the heat on. It was so, it felt so good. And then you get to sit down in a chair and that is just like gold when <laughs> you can sit in a chair because we weren't allowed to sit in any chairs in training they don't have any chairs so you have to sit on the floor um and even during like fire guard you're not sitting in a chair you're standing there um with your weapon and everything once you get those and like your ach like your helmet and for an hour and you're cleaning on on fire guard so like when you can sit down you really relax and you want to like fall asleep and that's really bad don't fall asleep in class um if you stand up and walk to the back of the classroom or wherever you are that the lesson is being held um they'll notice that they you might feel like an idiot or like you're standing out but Trust me, you would rather stand out standing up in the middle of the lesson and walking to the back than being called out for sleeping um, because then the whole company gets messed up for that. So just pay attention in class. Look out. Like we were really bad about not looking out for the people next to us. Like if someone next to us was falling asleep, we would have no idea. Like we were just so oblivious to helping others when they really needed help and that ties in with being a battle buddy like if someone next to you is falling asleep like pinch them or like tell them hey if you fall asleep i'm gonna like kick you i needed to be kicked i needed to be pinched like i was always standing up in the back of the classroom i think one girl started to call me sleepy like like one of the seven dwarves or whatever like she started to call me sleepy which i didn't care i was always freaking tired so as long as you're standing up and like um you know, taking responsibility, then that's a good way to like stand out in a positive way. So also I wanted to hit on, um, this is kind of off topic. This isn't a way to impress your drills, but this is for like females specifically. Um, I wanted to bring up birth control. So I know a lot of females have a lot of questions about um, like how do you bring your birth control 
or any kind of medication. Birth control is a little bit different because it's not really considered a medication. It's just a birth contraceptive, so it's not really needed for you to function on a daily basis. But if you're on birth control regularly, even though you're not going to be having sex, obviously, while you're in basic training, um, you and you want to stay on your regular routine with that, just print out or have your pharmacist print out your like prescription with your name on it from your doctor and have that in your baggie with your birth control. I was on the NuvaRing while I was in basic training and I had a whole box of NuvaRings with me that I kept in my hygiene section in my in my bunk and um, it was never questioned. Um, I mean the drill sergeants obviously there are so many people that go through basic training every year they know what birth control looks like and if it looks like something that they haven't seen before like if it's in like an orange uh, like pill bottle they'll ask you but they're not gonna just like dump it out on the floor you know you can show them your prescription with your doctor like signed off on it and that's your civilian doctor not your MAPS doctor um, like your gyno or whoever you see for that um, and it, it it was never questioned I don't know if any other girls were on birth control but I really wanted to stay on my schedule um, and not have to deal with like horrible cramps and bleeding while I was at basic training, but um, It wasn't it wasn't a big deal at all. I just kept it with me the whole time and it was fine. So um, Yeah, that's that's all I wanted to cover for this video. I don't really want to overwhelm y'all with a super long video anymore um, Let me know if y'all have any like requests or anything or questions just comment below and I will do my best to keep posting more frequently. Thanks, y'all.